इट इज नॉट द स्लाइड्स नहीं आ रही आपकी नो no? नहीं नहीं नॉट यट हाँ अब आ गया अब आ गया आ गई सर ठीक है तो गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन आई वेलकम ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ डी ओ ए टू डॉक्टर ललित और डॉक्टर ललित डॉक्टर हितेश सर डॉक्टर विजय डॉक्टर समीर एंड डॉक्टर मनिंदर ऑफ कोर्स इज ऑन बैक बोन ऑफ दिस वेबिनार एंड इनफैक्ट दिस इज और गोइंग टू बी द सेवेंथ पी जी ई पी जी क्लास ऑन दिस सैचरडे Uh, today we have got a pleasure of Dr. S K Sharma, who is our H O D in D D U Hospital, and uh, he has got a special interest in arthroscopy and arthroplasty, with uh, with special interest on acetabular fracture. He has been a keen academician, and has already done more than twenty five theses along through uh, through his P G students. and it is our pleasure to invite dr sharma to take up this talk today on radiology and classification of acetabular fracture and uh, today we have got an, uh, another guest as a expert panelist dr professor vijay sharma from aims he will be available for uh, to us and to answer our uh, questions from the uh, various uh, uh, delegates as well as anything which is being discussed among the four group so without wasting much time i will request dr sharma to start uh, today's presentation over to dr sharma please thank you thank you vinit can, can you see the this full screen right now yes sir you are visible so good afternoon and welcome you all first of all i thank delhi orthopedic association for giving me an opportunity to speak on this topic on radiology and classification of acetabular fractures it's really great to have uh, with us an excellent team of experienced panelist in the field of pelvic acetabular surgery and today i am looking forward to have a lively discussion on this particular topic so before starting it's uh, better to have some idea of uh, this anatomy actually proper interpretation of plane radiographs in ct to further classify the fracture is an essential step in the first and prerequisite before planning internal fixation and choosing an ap appropriate surgical approach so the innominate bone is a complex three dimensional structure with a difficult anatomy and the need for a detailed anatomical understanding cannot be overemphasized and for correct interpretation of radiographs it's very important to correlate the anatomical landmarks on the bone with the corresponding landmarks on, on the radiographs as you'll see later in this part of the uh, this uh, presentation that some of the anatomical and the radiological landmarks may not correlate and similarly detailed anatomy is also required for understanding the ct cuts which are also crucial for planning the surgery so as you see the pelvis from the front uh, you can see the iliac crest this part of the bone is iliac wing or the iliac fossa then anterior superior iliac spine interspinous notch and the anterior inferior iliac spine then you have a groove here which is psoas uh, psoas groove where the psoas muscle passes then iliopectinal eminence and then again the pubis part and pubic tubercle here so all these are part of the anterior column you, you can see the operator foramen this particular uh, the view of the pelvis is when the pelvis as if uh, has been internally rotated about 45 degrees uh, what you see in an obturator oblique view again the anterior superior iliac spine the anterior inferior iliac spine here the anti uh, this iliopectinal eminence you can see that the lower border of iliopectinal eminence is at the lower border of anterior horn of the articular uh, surface anterior wall of the acetabulum then obturator foramen the body of the ischium and ischiopubic rami and the posterior wall of the acetabulum and posterior horn and the, in the center the cotyledonous fossa so you must be aware what we are talking about in the rest of the this presentation so one must be sure about what landmark we are talking about now this is another view of the pelvis uh, which we see in iliac oblique view with slight external rotation of the pelvis on the affected side so here we see the greater sciatic notch the ischial spine the lesser sciatic notch the obturator foramen is not visible in this x ray you see the arcuate line on pelvic brim and the quadrilateral surface actually this part of the flat surface of the inner pelvis is the quadrilateral surface 
you can see the uh, this uh, iliopectal eminence here, and again a groove here where the vessels pass. This part of the bone is on the medial side and anteriorly is the obturator canal where the obturator vessels are passing. And this is also forming a boundary of teardrop. So this part of the bone. Now, for, uh, this, according to the littoral, uh, astabulum is being contained within open uh, arms of a Y, where in the, which are the two columns, the entry column, which is a longer, this is the entry half of the leg bone, and the posterior part, which starts from the greater sciatic notch. And the establishment is said to contain between these two columns. Actually, the, uh, the supporting structure of the establishment are more important during re reconstruction. Uh, for reconstructing the establishment, we have to reconstruct the columns because we are externally aligning the establishment. So this anatomy is very important. So, uh, Vineet, can you, uh, we are not, uh, can you see the whole slide? I'm not able to see the whole it slide. Is, it, it is It is visible, sir. It is very much visible. Uh, can we minimize this window? Yeah. Uh, you, you can minimize from there. Uh, actually, I was seeing only the half of the screen. Uh, so You can exit. Uh, yeah. Exit. Yeah, the posterior column, which starts from greater sciatic notch here, this area, and continue, includes the posterior half of the establishment. And the posterior retro establisher or subcotyloid, uh, this retrocotyloid surface and subcotyloid groove where the tendon of obturator externus passes, the ischial tuberosity, body of the ischium, and ischial pubic ramus. So these are the uh, parts of the posterior column. It, uh, posterior border is formed by the greater sciatic notch, the ischial spine, and behind the ischial tuberosity. The inner half of the posterior column is flat, which is known as the quadrilateral surface. The posterior column extends from the almost anterior half of the leg crest here and includes the anterior, uh, this, uh, il anterior ilium, uh, which is the gluteus medius tubercle here, and anterior superior leg spine, then anterior inferior leg spine, the whole of the anterior half of the establum, the anterior wall and the dome, and the gutter of the iliopectal here, and the iliopectal eminence. So this understanding of column is very important whenever we talk about the, the radiology and the columns of the column fractures. So the concept of entry column and posterior column is very important. So to evaluate the astrobulum, you require these ten, uh, four uh, views, the standard AP view of the whole pelvis, the standard AP view centered on the affected hip joint, and two judet views, the operator oblique and the iliac oblique, as well as C, uh, 2D CT and 3D reconstructions. AP pelvis with both hips, should be included in all cases uh, to see a rare establer, bilateral establer fracture, uh, which is uh, not that common, but uh, was found to be about 10 to 15 cases in a series of 1,000 cases by Judith and uh, You can also see another fracture of the pelvic wing here, which might not be related to the fracture at Stabulum and which might be independent of that, like a fracture of MI, which might be a part of pelvis, or even the iliac crest, which may not be again part of the establer fracture and even a uh, sacroiliac dislocation or uh, the, uh, pubic symphysis disruption. So uh, the inclu uh, including the whole of the pelvis is very important in this particular view. Then second view, AP view, should be centered over the hip joint. So you have to see six fundamental landmarks in the AP view, the ilio line, the ilio line, the posterior border of the stabulum here, which is straight, and the anterior border of the stabulum which has a slightly sinus or curved shape here, then continues with the, uh, this border of the obturative foramen here. So you can clearly see this straight shadow here, which is shadow of the posterior wall. Then a shadow here, which is slightly more proximal, and slightly more horizontally placed here, and which has convexity here. And then it merges with the superior border of the obturative foramen. Then you have to uh, see the teardrop and the dome or the roof. So it is very important to see the six, uh, uh, this radio, uh, six landmarks in each and every radiograph for evaluating any stable fracture on AP view. Now, actually, uh, the radiological lines are produced by uh, rays, X-rays, whenever a bony surface becomes tangential or X-ray beam is crossing a border. 
otherwise a line is not formed on the x-ray so if you see the formation of iliopectin line the x-ray beam is uh, crossing this particular border and it is the shadow is being projected on the x-ray film so that's why it is forming a line similarly ilio ischial line is formed whenever a quadrilateral surface becomes tangential it is not crossing, crossing the border here so even a 1 cm wide strip of the quadrilateral surface here when beam is tangential may lead to formation of ilio ischial line and this is uh, this particular line is seen only in x rays there is no uh, such corresponding line on the uh, hip bone and even if you tilt the pelvis slightly this particular line will be lost so since the beam is becoming tangential to this part of the acetabulum you will see radiological mark or line and you can see that the whole of the surface is not necessary uh, for formation of this line so here only this short uh, this smaller part of the surface is becoming tangential to the beam so even a smaller area can uh, form a line instead of a wider surface so in ap view you see the iliopectin line actually the iliopectin line in anterior three fourth corresponds to the anatomical radiological brim while in the posterior one fourth uh, this particular shadow is not formed by the anatomical brim or the arcuate line but is formed by the uh, sciatic notch as well as uh, the sciatic buttress some of which uh, part of which is becomes tangential in ap view however the ilio ischial line as i had already explained where the beam is becoming tangential to quadrilateral surface and it is a radiolo radiological line only and which is a shadow of the quadrilateral surface so these two lines are very important then tear drop this particular u or uh, this u shaped v or u shaped uh, shadow here is the tear drop so what is the significance of tear drop and how it is formed the lower border of the tear drop here is from the ischiopubic notch or the superior border of the operator foramen while the external limb of the u here is formed by the cotyledonous fossa where the beam is becoming tangential in ap view however the external uh, sorry internal limb is formed by the obturator canal as well as the quadrilateral surface this is the area of the obturator canal so this particular uh, question about tear drop is also being asked in the exam even in otherwise plain x rays any examiner can ask about what is how the tear drop is formed and this is especially important for interpretation of x rays how the relation of ilio ischial line changes in relation to tear drop and this was very important when ct was not available again dome this part of dome or the roof again dome uh, the shadow of the dome is only radiological line it uh, does not denote its particular surface actually it is produced by the x-ray beam which is uh, tangential to the most cranial part of the acetabular beam and it is not showing this uh, that this whole surface is being uh, involved here so even a small part uh, maybe 2 to 3 mm the beam is becoming tangential so can show a particular line and so it does not give an idea of overall integrity of the so called anatomical roof so this particular point must be clearly understood that if you see a roof in a particular view it is not giving that uh, the whole of the roof is intact especially in case of transverse fractures if you see this particular line we have to find out where the transverse fracture is cutting here at this particular point and this to find out how much roof is re still remaining with the superior part of the acetabulum so as to plan the conservator or the operative treatment and this particular roof is different in all the views obturator oblique uh, the roof is uh, showing a different part how uh, however in the iliac oblique it could be a, could be a different part so roof should be assessed in all the views and it, it is uh, does not matter that uh, if roof is intact in particular view uh, the congruence is all right or the area articulating with the sector of the roof is all right so there are some landmarks what we have discussed the iliopectinian line and the anterior rim or the anterior wall is a column of uh, this landmark of the anterior column tear drop again is a landmark of the anterior column however if it is displaced in relation to iliopectinian line it could be uh, showing the relationship of displacement of posterior column or Uh, could be displaced uh, this particular relationship might be displaced in uh, t-shaped fractures iliopectinian line 
and posterior of the scapulum they are landmarks of the posterior column our roof could be uh, since it is different in all the views it could be a landmark of uh, any of the columns so you require two jude oblique views to see the scapulum as you see the obturator foramen and the iliac crest and the fossa they are making an angle of 90 degree to each other so the whole of the scapulum can be uh, cannot be assessed in a particular one view so you require two particular views to demonstrate this particular anatomy and for judet view the coccyx should be at the center of cotylate fossa of the femoral head so you have to see that whether the appropriate uh, rotation of the patient is present or not so obturator oblique photo uh, this radiograph is taken by tilting the affected side internally 45 degree or elevating the pelvis 45 degree and you see this particular picture you see the whole of the anterior column here this particular column is anterior column starting right from here and see the posterior wall this curved shadow here in this particular view the lowermost is the posterior wall whenever pelvis is being tilted you don't see the anterior wall here and you see the whole of the obturator foramen here any fracture line passing through the ischiopubic ramus can be clearly seen which was not visible in the ap view iliac crest is seen in, in profile you don't see the whole of the iliac crest here if you see the whole of the iliac crest that means uh, the rotation of the patient is not appropriate you just see the this much of the iliac crest here so this particular view is for anterior column and the posterior wall so must be seen for break in the anterior column and as well as any uh, fracture line passing through the posterior rim then iliac oblique view is tilting the 45 degree the affected side or the healthy side so or externally rotating the pelvis hemi pelvis and you see this particular view where the pubic symphysis and the ischial tuberosity they are superimposing and the whole of the operative foramen has been obliterated and this particular view is for looking at the posterior border of the iliac uh, innominate bone which includes the greater sciatic notch this particular surface the ischial spine and the ischial tuberosity here this is the posterior column and the anterior wall this curved surface here curved border a faint shadow you see here this is the anterior wall so don't confuse that this might be the posterior wall on this side in obturator oblique view the lowermost structure was posterior wall and in iliac oblique view this shadow is anterior wall and most important point is that you see the whole of the iliac crest here so any anterior column or both column fracture can be easily seen which uh, is cutting the iliac crest here so the whole of the iliac crest can be seen here ct is a useful adjunct to radiographic imaging and not a replacement of good quality ap radiographs uh, you take ct cuts at 2 mm uh, this distances and one should utilize ct to better interpret the plane radiographs and understand the fracture line so ct is particularly uh, particularly helpful in fractures of the walls which might not be seen in judet views and ap view uh, for showing the intra articular fragments and marginal impaction what is marginal impaction a piece of subchondral bone here impacts inside the scapulum as a result of which there is a loss of congruence and if you fix the posterior wall in such a situation there might mean congruity so this particular piece of the bone has to be elevated and then filled with bone graft and then the uh, wall should be reconstructed so this particular thing is marginal impaction which is very common in posterior wall fractures you also see the comminution of the uh, this posterior wall fragments and also many a times there could be associated head fracture which might not be visible in plain radiographs you also see the joint congruence and especially the evaluation of the posterior pelvic ring and whether there is any si dislocation that can be better seen in ct images so for 2d cts it's very important that you assess the four following four ct cuts one is at the level of iliac wing if there is a break in the iliac wing here or cut fracture line passing through the iliac wing here then there could be a column fracture especially of anterior column and both column fracture or anterior column with anterior hemitransverse anterior column with posterior hemitransverse 
So this most superior cut at the level of SI joint uh, evaluates the iliac wing, whether it's in breaking the iliac wing or not. This particular cut, which has anterior posterior median lateral borders here, and we you see a head uh, inside this uh, subchondral bone here. This assesses the superior dome. And this is, I will say, it is the most important cut. A column fracture has a transverse orientation. However, uh, this uh, transverse fracture has anteroposterior orientation. Next CT cut is at the level of walls. This is again lower down. This shows wall fracture. And the lowermost CT cut, which is forming the roof of the operator foramen, shows whether this, uh, uh, this uh, operator foramen is fractured or not. And for sure, you can diagnose that uh, there is, if there is a break here in this area, in the top of the operator foramen, that it might be a T-shaped fracture or a column fracture, which is passing, uh, separating the anterior posterior columns. So you have to assess these four cuts. Although uh, radiologists uh, uh, might be giving you so many uh, CT cuts, but it's very important to look at these four cuts. So a column fracture has a transverse orientation. So this is typical of a column fracture, while transverse fracture has an anterior posterior orientation. However, a wall fracture has a 45 degree orientation like this. So 3D reconstruction are easier to interpret for the less experienced and also may help in preoperative planning as a teaching tool. Uh, you can uh, subtract the head and However, they are not as accurate for examining the marginal impaction, uh, minor fracture lines, or intraosseous fragments inside the joint. Accurate interpretation of radiographs and classification of the fracture determines the surgical approach of the astrobulum. So it's very important uh, to interpret the radiographs and classify a fracture. So way back in 1964, it was Judith and Lutornal in their classic paper in Journal of Bone and Joint Surgery. They uh, this uh, uh, presented this classification of the stubble fractures, and since that particular time, this uh, classification has not much changed. And this is the only fracture where this uh, so uh, uh, this classification, uh, original classification, has been followed, and there is no change in this. And Judy and Lutornal, after a detailed radiographic examination of three uh, standard plane radiographs, AP and both Judith views. They uh, classified the estabular fractures into five elementary patterns and five associated patterns. So these are the five elementary patterns, the anterior wall, the anterior column. This is the posterior wall, the posterior column, the anterior wall, and the anterior column, and transverse. So why these are considered as elementary? Because either the fracture line is involving one part of the column here, or in this case of transverse fracture, it is a single line just for the simplicity of the fracture. However, this particular uh, line in case of transverse fracture is cutting both the columns. However, it, it is different from bo uh, both column fracture, which we will be seeing in uh, the coming slides. So don't confuse a fracture which is crossing both the columns and a both column fracture. So these are five elementary fractures, uh, fra fractures of the astrobulum, the posterior wall, the posterior column, the anterior wall, the anterior column, and transverse. A combination of elementary patterns is associated patterns, the posterior wall with posterior column, a transverse fracture with posterior wall, a T-type fracture, which is where the upper part is just like a transverse fracture, and a <clears throat> vertical limb passes through the ischiopubic notch and cuts the ischiopubic ramus. This is a T-shaped fracture. Then entry column with posterior hemi-transverse fracture. Here, there is a fracture of the entry column. And only the posterior half of the lower part of the estabulum is cut transversely here. There's still an intact bone which is attached to the ilium and which is articulating with the axial skeleton here through the SI joint. So just see this part of bone, which is still intact. However, in both column fractures, no part of the estabulum is intact. The T or Y is formed above the estabulum and the whole of the estabulum is free and this is a sort of free, uh, floating type of the estabulum. Only this part of the ilium is articulating with the SI joint. And this whole part of the lower ilium is free. So this is a both column fracture. So we'll one by one discuss what are the radiological features and how to identify these patterns. 
in elementary as well as associated fractures. So this is a posterior wall fracture. In AP view, this is the posterior wall fracture, is a crescent shaped fracture. And what you see here is the, you, there is a no image of the posterior wall, which would have been a straight wall here. The anterior wall is visible here. Iliopectinal, ilioischial lines are maintained. And the operator foramen is intact. So all radiological landmarks, except the posterior wall here, are intact in this AP view. Operator oblique view is the best view to examine a posterior wall fragment, which can show the size as well as combination. And you can see that there are no other uh, associated patterns. The iliopectinal line or the anterior column is maintained. The whole of the obturator, obturator foramen is intact. And similarly, the iliac oblique view, the posterior border of the innominate known is in continuity, no fracture here. Uh, the posterior wall fragment is superimposed here on this. And the anterior border of the estabulum can be seen here. The posterior wall fractures, uh, sometimes uh, uh, there is an instability in posterior wall fractures and hip joint after the dislocation, dislocation or subluxation again gets reduced and the posterior wall fragment gets sometimes gets superimposed on the AP view. So you have to clearly look for uh, the, all the radiological landmarks before saying that there is no posterior wall fracture. However, in the same case, if you take an operator oblique view, this fracture is clearly visible, also showing a hip dislocation. So posterior wall fracture could be involving the, uh, either it could be involving the dome, which is uh, posterior superior, where part of the roof is separated, or it could be pure posterior wall fracture, or could be posterior inferior, which is totally confined below the roof, and the detached fragment includes the inferior horn of the articular cartilage, and the subcortilate groove. So CT of the posterior wall shows a 45 degree cut here, not uh, traversing this area, and might also show a marginal impaction, where a segment of the articular surface with underlying cancellous bone is impacted away from the joint and leading to incongruity. So uh, this, uh, this axial CT is very important for uh, this uh, delineating the posterior wall fractures. Then posterior column fracture. This is another elementary type uh, fracture, posterior column. It is not that common, about three to 5% of the stabular fractures. Here, the fracture line starts from the greater sciatic notch here, includes the whole of the posterior half of the stabulum, as well as the dome, and then passes in the ischiopubic notch here, and then cuts the ischiopubic ramus. So this whole area gets separated, and femoral head usually follows the, uh, this uh, posterior column fragment, and displaces it medially and posteriorly. And this particular injury is particularly unstable, and most of the time requires internal fixation. This is how the posterior column fracture looks on Judith views. There's a displacement of ilio line. However, the ilio line is totally maintained. Then the relationship of teardrop and ilio line might be displaced. So this distance between the teardrop and ilio line, which is straight line here, might be increased. Then in Operator oblique view, the whole of the entry column is totally intact. And you see a cut here in the operator foramen here, which is characteristic of posterior column fractures. And iliac oblique view clearly shows the posterior column fracture with displacement uh, near the greater sciatic notch. So this is how the entry column uh, fracture looks in Judith views. Next elementary fracture is anterior wall fractures. Again, it is a very rare fracture, about one to two percent of the stabular fractures. The fracture line becomes near the anterior inferior left spine. It involves the anterior half of the stabulum here. And then it traverses down on the quadrilateral surface on the inner side. And again, exits here to the ischiopubic ramus here. Sorry, ischiopubic notch. And whole of the ischiopubic ramus remains intact. So it is a wall fracture, not a column fracture. So mostly, uh, most of the most, uh, anterior column is intact here, even this part as well as the lower part. So it is an anterior wall fracture. 
anterior wall fracture is associated with elevation of plate from the quadrilateral surface in most of the cases, which is involving the inner border, which might extend up to the inner border of the posterior wall pair. So this might be giving a picture of a line in, especially in illic oblique view. How the uh, anterior wall fracture looks on the Judith views. You see a fracture of the iliopectinal line. However, the ilioischial line is intact. Then there might be break here in the anterior rim of the estabulum. Then best view to show the anterior wall is obturator view, which is for the anterior column. And it is showing a trapezoid, fragment, uh, trapezoid shaped fragment, which has uh, two cuts on the anterior column, one here and another in this area, near the ischopubic notch. And the whole of the obturator foramen is intact. In the iliac oblique view, the posterior border of the innominate bone is intact. However, you see a shadow here, which might be uh, the split of the quadrilateral surface, which might be hinged from the uh, anterior wall fragment and is uh, uh, showing a line here since the extra beam is becoming tangential. And there's a radiolucency here, which is because of anterior wall uh, this, uh, fracture, which is displaced from this area. Now, anterior column fracture here, the fracture starts from the iliac crest, involves the whole of the anterior half of the estabulum and the dome, and then cuts in the uh, ischiopubic notch, ischiopubic ramus here. So anterior column fracture has four variants. It could start high in the iliac crest, then involving the estabulum, and then passing down, or it can start uh, at the level of anterior superior iliac spine, which is intermediate fracture of the anterior column, or it might start just near the anterior inferior leg spine with a similar course of fracture line lower down, or it might be starting at the iliopectinal eminence, which is a very low. So high anterior column fracture, intermediate anterior column fracture, low anterior column, and very low anterior column fracture. So these are variations of the anterior column fracture, but the, uh, in all of these cases, obturator foramen is being fractured. You just see here, most of the time it's near the, this pubis, Instead of, instead of near the ischial tuberosity. So this is the classic uh, radiograph of a anterior column, high anterior column fracture, where the line is starting in the iliac crest, involving the anterior half of the estabulum. And this is also cutting the anterior wall here. If you see the boundary of anterior wall here, it's cutting here, but the posterior wall is intact. Although this might not be visible, visible in this particular view, iliac oblique view. Here, the posterior wall is intact. And you see the fracture line here, breaking the anterior column, and also breaking the obturator foramen in the ischiopubic ramus. So there's a fracture of the iliac wing, as well as fracture in the obturator foramen, fracture in the anterior wall, and the, uh, this denominators of the posterior column and the posterior wall are intact. All the landmarks of the posterior column, they're intact the posterior border of the stabulum in iliac oblique view, as well as uh, this posterior wall in the obturator oblique view. Now, the fifth uh, elementary fracture is transverse fracture. Transverse fracture divides the ilium in the upper half and the lower half. This is the upper half and lower half. The fracture line is passing through the stabulum. It could pass just near the dome or the roof, which is called transtectal fracture or just near the junction of the non-articular and the articular area, or the, just near the cotyloid surface, which is juxtatectal transverse fracture. Or it might be passing through the non-articular area, not through the roof, but only involving the anterior and the posterior horns. So it is infratectal transverse fracture. So femoral head in transverse fractures follows the inferior ischiopubic fragment, and there is a medial displacement leading to central dislocation of the lower fragment. This is the typical uh, feature of a transverse fracture where iliopubic, uh, sorry, ilioischial and iliopectinal lines, they are cut at the same point, at this particular point. Anterior wall and the posterior wall also fractured here. The obturator foramen and tear drop, they are intact. This is how it looks in the obturator oblique view, where there's a fracture line cutting the anterior column. The obturator foramen is intact no fracture in the ischiopubic ramus, and the posterior, uh, uh, this 
in lake oblique view showing the posterior fragment near the greater sciatic notch displaced medially as well as the back here in the anterior cobalt so this is the typical uh, uh, this radiograph of a uh, transverse fracture a ct uh, uh, ct in uh, 2d ct in transverse fracture has a sagittal orientation oriented from anterior to posterior this is typical even on one ct cut you can just uh, with confidence diagnose a transverse fracture if there is no fracture in the operative foramen and in the superior dome uh, the axial cut in superior dome shows a fracture line uh, like this although this particular fracture line will also be present in t shaped fractures however in case of t shaped fracture in addition to this fracture line the operative foramen will also be fractured so this is the typical ct of a transverse fracture where there is sagittal orientation of the ct cut to the ct don't confuse this particular with a wall fracture it is the same fracture line which is going down and giving a sagittal orientation so don't say that it is a wall fracture it is just a component of transverse fracture which is going down this is a superior cut and this is inferior cut now we come to associated fractures associated fractures are where uh, two of the elementary fractures could be combined like a posterior wall fracture combined with the posterior column fracture this is one of the associated types again it has some features of the posterior wall uh, posterior column fracture displacement of iliohistal line break in the anterior wall and you superimpose you see a superimposed fragment here which is best seen in operator oblique view again the wall fragment and again a posterior column fragment seen in iliac oblique view displaced medially and starting in the greater sciatic notch so this is the posterior column with posterior wall fracture in ct in addition to a transverse fracture line which is typical of a column fracture you see the general orientation of the fracture line is a transverse many a times it is never transverse but slightly oblique in addition there is a posterior wall fragment so ct cut can uh, definitely diagnose the posterior wall fragment which might not be visible in ap view then next associated fracture is transverse fracture with posterior wall you see a transverse fracture here and how do you diagnose transverse fracture cutting the iliopectineal iliohistal lines at this particular point then cutting both the walls here the anterior rim as well as the posterior rim no break in the operator foramen and some part of the roof attached here you see the in uh, judet view the whole of the intact foramen the break in the anterior column and this is the best view for showing the anterior wall so in addition to co uh, column transverse fracture in addition to transverse fracture there is a wall fracture and this particular view is showing the displacement of the lower half of the transverse fracture where the distal spine is displaced inside the pelvis here the next in associated type is t shaped fracture it is just like a transverse fracture here but in addition there is a vertical line which is cutting through the ischiopubic notch and then cuts the anterior foramen uh, sorry operator foramen so this uh, t uh, this vertical line of the t might be having a different orientation it might be like this or totally vertical or might be going posteriorly just near the ischial tuberosity so there are variants of t and this particular uh, fracture uh, vertical components best seen in uh, operator oblique view so how do you diagnose that it is a t shaped fracture break in the anterior and posterior walls break in the iliopectineal and iliohistal lines and in addition there is a fracture in the operator foramen isco pubic ramus here so just see here which is best seen here so in addition to transverse fracture there is a break in the operator ring lower down in the isco pubic ramus the break in the isco pubic notch cannot be definitely seen in the uh, this judet views however it can be clearly seen in 2d ct in iliac oblique view you see the displacement of the lower half of the T, uh, lower half of the T-shaped fragment, the anterior or the posterior, which is displaced inside. This is how it looks in 2D CT. The general orientation of the fracture is from anterior to posterior, just like a transverse fracture orientation. However, the quadrilateral surface in a cut just superior to the operator foramen is also cut transversely. So this is the general orientation. the vertical or ap orientation of the 
main fracture line. However, in addition, there is a break in the quadrilateral surface in a cut which is uh, showing the obturator foramen, just above the obturator foramen. Now, it is another fracture anterior column with posterior hemitrosis. The anterior column is just what we had already described in elementary fractures. It could start high up in the iliac crest, or in, in this particular case, it is showing an intermediate fracture which is starting near the anterior superior iliac spine. However, there is in addition, there's a transverse cut here. The characteristic of this particular fracture is that some part of the estabulum is intact here, which is articulating with the uh, sciatic through the sciatic buttress and along with the SI joint through the axial skeleton. If you can demonstrate on CT that some part of the estabulum is still intact, sorry. So you can definitely diagnose the uh, anterior uh, column or wall with posterior hemitrosis fracture. So the anterior uh, component could be wall or a column. In this particular case, the fracture line is starting with the leg crest and leading to a break in the obturator foramen here. So obviously it is an anterior column fracture. So anterior column fracture, however, to see the hemitransverse component, there might be break in the posterior wall here. So a break in the posterior wall uh, does not always mean that it is a posterior wall fracture. It is just a fracture traversing through the posterior rim, which might be also present in the column fracture. So in illic oblique view, you see a break in the posterior border of the nominate bone here, just near the ischial spine. So it is the hemitransverse component, this half of the transverse fracture. Again, in obturator oblique view, you better see this entry column lines cut in the obturator foramen. Now CT can uh, with certainty diagnose entry column with posterior hemitransverse fracture. Just have a look at this CD, uh, th sorry, 3D CT of a entry column with posterior hemitransverse fracture. It is a high entry column fracture, which is starting here in the iliac crest and then going in the ischopubic ramus here. And from the middle of this area, it is going posteriorly, just near the ischial spine, where some part of the uh, estabulum on the lateral side is intact with this particular fragment, and which is communicating with the sciatic buttress, which is this part, and articulating with the SI joint. So CT, in the upper part of CTs, you'll see this particular picture of anterior column, which is a transverse orientation. You see this particular fracture line is starting high up in the iliac crest, and has a transverse orientation. So it is a column fracture. However, in lower half, this particular line has a sagittal orientation or anterior posterior orientation like this. So it is showing this particular component. So transverse fracture has in the upper uh, CT cuts, a coronal orientation, however in lower CT cuts, it is sagittal CT orientation. And if you can demonstrate that in this particular cut, some part of the estabulum is still intact with this part of the bone. So it is not a both column fracture. So it is essential to have some part of the estabulum still articulating in case of an uh, entry column with posterior hemitransverse fracture. So it is a common fracture of the estabulum, maybe accounting for about 20% cases. Here, the, both the columns, the entry column and the posterior column, they get separated. And the T or Y is formed just above the estabulum. In rest of the fractures, you saw, uh, especially in T-shaped fracture, the T was formed below and through the estabulum, not above here. However, in this particular fra fracture, a T or Y is formed above the estabulum. So as a result, this whole lower half of the bone, including the anterior column and posterior column, they get separated. Plus, they also get di dissociated by this vertical component. So the posterior column is separate, anterior is separate, and whole thing is separated from this part of the intact bone which is the upper half of the ilium here. And this is one of the most complex type of estabular fracture. Just have a look at this uh, fracture in AP view. There's a break in the ischial and iliopectin line. There's a break in the operative foramen as well. Then what you see, the whole of the estabular is medialized, but it is still congruent with the roof. You see here. 
and this particular femoral head is also superiorly displaced as you compare to this side. So there is superior and medial displacement of the femoral head. The joint congruity is still maintained in APVO. There's a break in the iliopecuniary iliosteal lines as well as break in the operator foramen. And in iliac oblique view, there's also break in the iliac crest and the iliac wing. And the posterior component or the posterior column component of a both column fracture is clearly visible here, fracture line passing through the greater sciatic notch and displacing inside. However, if you see that this particular area of the head is not congruent with the posterior column, most of the time the congruency is maintained with the anterior column and the roof. Some of these fractures, because of secondary congruence, sorry, in, in obturator oblique view, you see a spur sign, which is the intact bone of the ilium, which had separated from above and is seen in obturator oblique view as a spur sign. So this spur sign is diagnostic of a both column fracture. And if you see, uh, see this particular view, you find that the congruency of the femoral head is still maintained in it, uh, this anterior part and the, as well as the roof. And if you find this congruency in, uh, in all the views, some of these columns can be treated conservatively, especially in elderly and low risk patients. In CT, you see the separation of both columns by a coronal cut. Then in some of the cuts, superior cuts, uh, you see the, uh, the intact bone, which was articulating with the SI joint. And this is uh, forming the spur or radiological, spur, uh, sorry, CT spur sign, this particular bone, which is the intact part of the bone, which I just discussed about this part of the bone. So spur sign is best seen in obturator oblique view and is pathognomonic for both column fracture. This sign represents the posterior detachment of sciatic buttress or the iliac wing fracture. So this part of the bone here where the anterior and posterior columns are separated. So it is better visible in a 3D reconstruction. <clears throat> this particular area of the bone is responsible for forming the spur sign. It essentially disconnects the roof of the estabulum from the sciatic buttress. To, to summarize, you have to see these AP and both Judith views to correctly diagnose an estabular fracture. Then you see the four CT cuts, one cut passing through the iliac wing to diagnose a column fracture, then one cut passing through the dome, which has a shape just like this. Uh, where there's circle inside uh, this bone. This is the most superior part of the stabulum. And you have to see whether cut is uh, coronal or transverse, which decides the orientation of the fracture line. If it is the coronal fracture line, it is a column fracture. If it is a sagittal or, uh, or AP orientation, then it is a transverse fracture or T-shaped fracture. Then in the lower cuts, which are at the level of wall, you see a wall fracture. And this is the most inferior cut just above the obturator foramen which shows whether there is a break in the issue of pubic notch, which decides uh, the separation of columns here and which will be present in a column fracture as well as T-shaped fractures. How, to summarize, there are three major patterns, the column transverse of the wall. If you see in radiograph on CT of an estabular fracture, and if you see a break in the inferior pubic ramus, then it, either it is a column fracture or a T-type uh, fracture. If you don't see a break in the inferior pubic ramus, then either it is a wall or a transverse fracture. Then further, uh, this uh, diagnosis can be done by uh, CT cut through the dome of the stabulum to see the AP orientation of the fracture line and similar uh, diagnostic uh, this orientation of a wall fracture line. However, if inferior pubic ramus is broken, then it could be a column fracture or T-shaped fracture. Then column fracture, where uh, could be anterior column or posterior column. If link, link wing is broken, it could be a fracture of anterior column, both column and anterior column with posterior hemitransfers. Uh, both column fracture can be further diagnosed by secondary congruence and spur sign, as well as a CT cut, which is showing in the separation of the sh uh, sciatic buttress. However, the posterior column, there will be no break in the link uh, wing. However, there will be break in the ischial notch and there will be break in the operator ring. 
and similarly uh, with confidence anterior column with posterior hemitransverse fractures can be diagnosed by showing in ct that some part of the acetabulum is intact with the ilium thank you thank you very much sir thank you dr sharma for such a extensive and elaborative description i think uh, this was such an a difficult topic which you have tried to make it quite simpler and most of our students as well as our colleagues they must have gained a lot through this one so now i will request dr vijay sharma if you just want to add something with that so that i can take up some questions in between dr vijay sharma please yeah thank you dr vinit i think uh, it was such a wonderful lecture so many things even uh, we learned from this but i think uh, uh, in x ray series i think still we get uh, pelvic uh, inlet outlet because even in your x rays we could see sa joint disruption in acetabular fracture so still that is part of uh, ed protocol uh, uh, for the students and number two roof arc angle i think i think you are right i think now because of the so much use of ct i think roof arc angle uh, not a uh, lot of people they use but still i think roof arc angle for uh, pgs uh, i think roof arc angle uh, is what we could tell them so that uh, there is the amount of dome which is intact so roof arc angle was one thing so otherwise it was it was it was such a comprehensive lecture so and we Thank enjoyed you, it Vijay. a lot yeah. thanks thanks a lot uh dr vijay could you just please elaborate this roof arc angle to the pg student because there is not much slide uh, any slide dr sharma has shown about that if you can actually, just add, roof, Yeah, roof arc angle actually from the center of the head you draw a line vertical and then a horizontal line uh, or a line through the uh, proximal part of the fracture so it will it will show how much proximal portion or dome of the fracture is uh, you know if it is more than 45 degrees then obviously fracture is quite low if it is less than 45 degrees it means fracture is quite proximal so it, it has utility in transverse fracture it has utility in t shaped fractures sometimes t shaped fractures you operate and other side you don't operate because roof arc angle is quite uh, low it is more than 45 degrees so amount of dome which is which is attached to the proximal portion i think uh, this, that is what we can uh, learn but in ct also i think uh, the proximal 1 cm of cut that is also in criteria so that has uh, sort of changed uh, because less and less number of uh, doctors they are relying on uh, roof arc angle so they look they look at olsen criteria from the top they look at 1 cm if there is no fracture line there automatically uh, it is more than uh, it is uh, more than 45 degrees and most of these fractures they can be treated to non operatively so olsen criteria is a substitute for roof arc angle uh, in a ct scan but alit wants to say something yes dr alit please thanks dr sharma it was an excellent uh, lecture it was almost like a piano class it was so mesmerizing <laughs> actually the the, the yes, pictures were amazing the description was classic and it was such a complete uh, sort of a uh, lecture i hope this recording is available for the postgraduate because most of the courses we attend this part of the you know, whole course is to be done in 10 or 20 minutes so it is always a hush hush so right. appreciate your lecture i think it was a very very useful lecture and um, i just wanted to reemphasize that uh, x rays and ct both are required and uh, it is important for post graduates to understand in the post graduation itself that they need to get the special views done nobody is willing to do the special views neither the technician nor the resident but if you get into the habit only you get only then you get to see them and uh, when you may, uh, go for a decision making you start from an x ray you go to the ct and you always come back to the x ray that's how you complete your uh, picture on what you're going to plan to do in the surgery exactly and for intraoperatively you know these are the same views which help you intraoperatively on deciding from where you started and how much you have achieved so intraoperatively in the siam again you use the same uh, special views to understand so i should just uh, congratulate dr sharma yeah. and uh, thank you dr lal the pgs thank were so much to this amazing lecture Yeah, thanks, Doctor Lit. Thanks for your nice comment. I think this is definitely available in the YouTube. We'll be putting it on YouTube for this one. But uh, my only request to you, uh, would you please just tell to the PG students, he does getting the nowadays. You know, the all the PG students are very uh, fascinated with the this uh, extensive, expensive uh, investigation. So, is there any role of MRI also in diagnosing fracture acetabulum, or does only CT and X-ray are sufficient? Doctor, let it please. If you want to make it less complicated, there is no role. 
so even if we want to decide for the surgery no we don't we we i i don't think i remember ever i have done a mri to decide upon the management of an established fracture that's so it I, I, dr I vijay think, yeah i think no, dr vijay no role for mr absolutely so, absolutely no role no role of mri because uh, so, i think most will be showing articular cartilage no injury right. and in uh, whatever case uh, you have to operate so prognostically uh, yeah, so as but, well it has no particular value as far as yeah and then the best is, best part was uh, i think your uh, uh, description about the 2d cuts which is very important for pg students because nowadays for <laughs> students they have started looking at uh, straight away 3d reconstruction and they know yeah. planning but the way you told marginal impactions and head fractures and particular pieces which are much better uh, seen on a 2d cuts rather than a 3d so i think they should be in a habit of uh, going through what dr lalit sir said starting from basic x rays to specialized views and then to the basic cuts of ct and then gradually go over to complete ct and then come back to x rays because x rays are available in the operation theater you cannot get a ct in the operation theater so you have to have idea about all the cuts all the imaging sequences uh, plain x rays so mri mri has mri has no role absolutely i don't remember so many years of practice but uh, uh, not even a single case which mr has made, right. made any difference or even Absolutely. we have advised mri for facet ablum uh, just to look at anything it will give huge amount of uh, you know uptake here and there and it is not going to give you any information you know? we are looking at the bony right. portion we are going to plan the fixation of bony parts so. only get, uh, if you look at literature on mri and stablum you will only get a few research articles in which they have looked into the integrity of piriformis and operator externus to fly or to sort of make it as a predictor whether avian will happen in this patient or not but these are only research papers and uh, they don't come into the treatment algo- algorithm of the yeah yeah yes that's lovely that's fantastic i think the take home, yeah. the take home message for the pg uh, student is that we don't need to rush for the mri for all this patient only thing we require is the ct scan at the most and the x-ray with the special views am C- i right sir C- ct is always required and absolutely there is yeah, no yeah ct about. yes no CT no for the develop- for evaluating yes. any stable fracture and absolutely mm-hmm. there is no role of mr this should be the message i think uh, should be yes that's yes. that's right and x-ray special views are very important the due date views are very important yeah, absolutely. to diagnose them mm-hmm. sir now uh, hello doctor yes, yes doctor sir please please yeah. doctor sharath please excellent presentation of a very difficult topic you made it very look very simple and particularly the algorithms which you gave in the end i think they're quite uh, uh, easy to understand them uh, one question i want to ask that in dude views uh, uh, what we see in operator oblique view we see more of uh, uh, anterior column mm-hmm. right and yeah. the other way around uh, in the uh, in the iliac views what about the walls like uh, we want to see the uh, posterior wall will that be better in a uh, operator view or a uh, uh, iliac view Uh, posterior wall is uh, uh, more, uh, better seen in operator oblique view and maybe may not be seen in iliac oblique view so just suppose it is su- superimposed over the anterior wall so right. you might not see anterior wall in the iliac oblique view however it is best seen in ap view or operator oblique view okay right and the other question i want to ask vijay uh, dr vijay uh, you said roof arc uh, angle you can uh, roof arc you can assess in a ct scan So you mean uh, you said one centimeter of would be there? Uh, so no, no, it's like it's not assessed. But uh, I think there was an article also in criteria is there in which uh, because earlier it was only on the basis of X-rays like uh, roof arc angle. But uh, what he calculated on a CT scan from the dome, if you take cuts, uh, axial cuts for one centimeter, ten millimeters, if there is no fracture, so automatically roof arc angle is uh, you know less than forty-five degrees. All right. So you take about so eight. Not, to- uh, Then cuts one yeah. one mm. Then if there is no fracture, yes. then it is. That's it. Then it means automatically fracture is that distal that it 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 does not need you know it is not a candidate for uh, surgery sort of. Uh, Doctor Vijay, don't you think that one centimeter is too short for a roof arc to be present on? No, I uh, think actually that, actually uh, it is a circumference of one centimeter down on both the sides. Yeah. It is a sort of diameter or semi circumference of one centimeter all around in superior most city cut. So yeah, one, from the superior most CT cut, cut, yeah, it will present in most of the yeah. uh, transrectal fractures, one centimeter. So in ten cuts of a one mm cut CT scan, if yeah. there is no fracture, 
we are sure that the important area is not injured. So can we treat that particular fracture conservatively? Or? That is one of the guidelines. We need to look at other factors which are there. Right. Whether joint is congruent or not, yeah, or instability yeah. is present or not. Yeah. Another right. uh, useful uh, thing about the wall and the column, the special views, if they show an anterior column, they'll show the posterior wall. So the special views show one column and one wall. So if it is a bit confusing, you can remember which column it is showing. It will show the opposite wall. Opposite wall, yeah. Yes, right, right. Anterior okay. column, posterior uh, wall. Yeah. Anterior column and the posterior wall. Similarly, posterior column. Posterior and column. And Posterior column and anterior. Yes, we are right. Uh, Dr. Sharma, there is a question from in the chat from the another PG student hmm. that uh, is there any role of traction view during Actually, the EDD when the patient comes? And do you yeah, have any? I forget to mention that all these judged views should be done uh, done without traction. In some of the cases, uh, the vestibular fracture might get reduced with traction. However, it could be totally unstable. So to find out exactly uh, what is the situation. So all the views should be without traction and absolutely no role for traction. Okay. And My practice any... very rarely when there is a very, very comminuted uh, both column fracture, you just can't make out what is happening. Do we actually have any pieces? So a gentle traction does uh, realign those uh, small pieces and tell you which is one of the larger pieces. Right. Especially, especially in both column fractures, too much comminution. Yeah. We're not able to make out yeah, that there it might help, but most of the time the view should be taken without any traction. Okay, and so is, is there any uh, role like uh, when we are doing a taking up for surgery part and all that? Mm -hmm. Then uh, is there an upper limit that these uh, after this period we cannot operate upon this external fracture? Uh, yeah, there are different uh, indication or different approaches. Some of the approaches are not performed after seven days to ten days, like renewing viral approach. Stopa approach is very difficult after maybe uh, 10 to 15 days. So posterior approaches can still be attempted after three to four weeks. So it depends on the type of fracture. So right. there is no okay. hard and fast rule that... So ideally you would like to operate all of them between fifth to seventh day. That's yeah. the ideal time. But you know, by, with the associated fractures and other problems, it might not be always possible. But literature yes. is very clear. If you go beyond three weeks, your complication rates are going to go high. However, if Vijay is operating, I don't know, he might be operating up to six months. Yeah, Dr. No, Vijay, no, Dr. Uh, Vijay. I think, Dr. Lalit, you're right. I think uh, even in Mata series, uh, the, the cases they have operated after three weeks, 50% complication rates were there, even by Mata series. So, so it is like a lateral, lateral condyle, pediatric lateral condyle. So it's better to operate within 10 days, preferably within two weeks after that, the problems, they increase. But uh, Dr. Sharma is right. I think it all depends upon the type of fracture. Also single posterior wall, posterior approach, you still can go in and, you know, try to do in a younger patient. So it depends upon a lot of factors. So, so best, time to still approach after, external, after, yeah. best time to approach any external fracture is probably within first week. So you get easily yeah. uh, the reduction of all the columns. However, it is a must for anterior approaches to operate within first week. So that's very true. Uh, Dr. Vijay, uh, there was some confusion about the PGS one. What is the protocol being followed in your hospital for in an ED department for patient of fracture estabulum, isolated fracture estabulum? Like after stabilization, you directly admit the patient and uh, take him to the OR immediately, or you wait for some time, put him on traction? No, no, no. Not at all. I know patient goes to OT from emergency. I think they are very well. They are uh, sort of investigated. Uh, they are imaged properly and they are planned in a proper list. So uh, only indication would be like uh, they reduced it and they share technical palsy or uh, it is a reducible dislocation. Then then also we try to do it early. It does not mean that we are going to do it at four o'clock in the morning. So maybe first case in the next list, but uh, they are properly imaged. Because if you go to OT, thinking it is dislocation will reduce and there are 10 pieces in the joint and you have to plan a reconstruction, you have to plan a electress grafting, so many inventory changes. So I think uh, acetabulum fracture is a fracture which you have to plan properly. I think maybe one or two hours, it does not make any difference. So it is not to be taken up at awkward time in the night because team is also a problem. You have to have a proper trained team, you know, the proper trained uh, residents, those who are acetabular uh, residents. So I, I don't think uh, such cases they should be taken up at uh, night two o'clock. I think next day morning is the best thing. Uh, Vijay, one more okay. question you can answer, Doctor Vijay. Uh, yes, yes, yes Doctor Bagaya, please. Like in both column fracture, uh, wait, how we, you are, we are going. 
we are going away from pg course now okay last question <laughs> <laughs> in both column fracture both column fracture how you plan which one you to fix first anterior or posterior like just some yeah, basic tips. i think yeah same same thing has been asked by dr manoj not go for advanced external course, course only the basic tips actually associated both column fractures primarily injuries anterior not only time right so it is a dictum you start from periphery towards acetabulum start reconstructing from the top go towards acetabulum reconstruct the anterior portion and then look at the posterior portion because primary fracture pattern in anterior with posterior ma transfers and associated both column they are anterior so if you are lucky enough you have got a big uh, you know posterior column piece so you can fix it from anterior to posterior so most of the times we fix from one approach only but uh, there are a lot of associations sometimes there is a big posterior wall chunk so you will have to you know do another approach but such injuries they are usually most of them they are planned from anterior approach and fixing posterior from anterior if you are not able to then you can you have to switch that way. you have to do another approach you are right lalit lalit can add something that if dr lalit wants to add something he can dr add. lalit please So I think uh, in care of establer fractures, there are two very important factors. One is a fracture, and the other is surgeon. I know why Vijay is smiling. Most of us <laughs> who have started establer fracture started from the posterior side, and as we understood things, we gained confidence, we learnt more, we have moved towards the anterior side. So when we started our practice, we used to look at the ileac view and see if the posterior column is broken or not, and jump on the posterior side. Now we are looking at the anterior view. and trying to see whether there is a posterior wall or not if there is no posterior wall fracture there is no confusion go anterior but if you go by indications the the part of the fracture which is more displaced need to be addressed so that is one rule other rule which uh, vijay has described very well we go from top to bottom and if there is a, a multiplicity on top to bottom you combine top to bottom and back to front so that includes the si joint if it is involved thank you thank oh, you that, that's that's great ah uh, yes dr vijay please yeah dr vijay you are saying something go, yeah yeah if, if there is displacement uh, in the ileum and uh, you are trying to approach posteriorly trying to push the posterior view the posterior column are unreduced proximal portion so i think associated both column most of the times you know approach approaches are anterior plus minus uh, very rarely posterior uh, as, uh, like in association with anterior so you start most of the times with anterior i think uh, i think dr lalit would agree with I, me i think dr deep i have a comment to make that in, in both yes. column fractures uh, you don't have any fixed thing if you start from the uh, posterior side something first uh, both the columns are free and can easily displace so you have to first fix the entire column with the intact part of the ileum and start reconstructing from that area and since most of the injury is anterior in both column fractures as dr vijay has already mentioned and even in entire column with the posterior hemi transverse fractures most of the injury is anterior and posterior column is just a single piece which can be tackled by putting a leg screw from the uh, anterior side only from the pelvic brim and you just pass two uh, one or two screws to fixing the posterior column and you have something uh, which has already been fixed uh, to the intact part of the ileum so if you start from the back side you don't have anything to the whole column is free the entire column is moving so absolutely there is no role of uh, uh, starting from the back side in case of both column fracture thank you okay. sir so that's, after that's it. yeah acha sharma sir there is one question from the pg is there any absolute indication for treating any patient conservatively yes or all the patient of also has to be treated operatively there are so many fractures of the stabulum which can be treated conservatively one is low entire column fracture as we have already discussed about the roof arc measurements if the dome is intact either in ct cuts which we have discussed about 10 mm of uh, the roof is intact or if you uh, draw a roof arc you have 45 or 50 degree in all the views a roof arc of 50 degrees then and some of the both column fractures in elderly and uh, medically unfit patient when there is secondary congruence in all the three views so such fractures can be treated conservatively and minimally displaced fractures less than 2 millimeter, millimeter displacement so not each and every establer fracture uh, requires surgery so many can be treated conservatively with the help of traction yes so Am we I need right? to find out uh, so, find out whether instability is present instability is one loss of congruence is one and how much dome is uh, um, in, intact dome is remaining with the establer there's an important criteria 
and otherwise you don't accept more than 2 mm of uh, this offset or the displacement at the level of roof and the fractures absolutely, which absolutely. are of necessity is the transtectal transverse fractures which are passing through the dome they will uh, they will uh, very early lead to uh, degenerative arthritis so it is passing through the dome right acha uh, dr vijay anything you want to add in this room i think uh, dr sharma has said i think he has uh, cleared all the points basically we tell students instability and incongruity basically all the indications they fall into these two groups so if it is unstable if it is incongruent if it is stable it is congruent then you don't have to do anything so so many of the right, factors right. they are treated non operatively so it is basically instability and the congruence that is which is the most important criteria as well as right. displacement at the so, level. yes so, minimal displacement if it is less than 2 mm as you said will should does not need to be operated sir so one question i got it from whatsapp sir, for dr sharma yeah. i think somebody has joined little late and he just wanted you to just repeat one slide uh, how, what is anterior column and posterior column a basic question if you can just repeat first your first of your slide at least you can tell him Shall I go to? Uh, yeah, screen share. Yeah, you can just. Uh, yeah. yeah. Is it visible? Right. Not yet, sir. Not yet. Yeah, we can see your screen, sir. So you just, if you go to the PowerPoint presentation. Yeah. Now. So actually, just tell them about the anterior and posterior column. What first, is that? First, to have a look at this particular. Uh, Uh, photograph the anterior half of the ilium here starting from the iliac crest mainly including the gluteal tubercle which is the dense area of bone from where we take the bone graft this area of bone then sorry this area of bone this gray area so this was the anterior side so anterior half of this whole bone then including the whole of the dome here anterior wall of the acetabulum some of this uh, non articular area and ischio uh, pubic ramus here including the inferior horn so line is like this so it is better seen in this particular view so the fracture line starts here this area is the anterior column fracture line starts here should have been uh, should have come here on this side actually it is uh, forming a so, sort of both column fracture here mm hmm so it is this area of bone then anterior half of the uh, dome as well as the anterior half of the acetabulum and the ischial pubic ramus here so it is better seen here so anterior half of iliac wing anterior superior iliac spine then anterior inferior iliac spine here dome on this part then anterior, uh, sorry iliopectinal eminence and this whole anterior wall and cutting up to here so this whole area is free to rotate so it is separated from the that posterior area so this area of bone is anterior column how the posterior column starts from the greater sciatic notch not from here not from the here actually it was <laughs> seen by the lotornal that most of the fractures they have a geometry like this he did not uh, start the posterior column in this area of the bone most of the fractures uh, of the posterior column they start from this area from the greater sciatic notch and separating the uh, like this so this piece of bone is uh, rotated whenever the column fractures similarly anterior half of the uh, this fracture gets rotated and uh, is there any still doubt any doubt yeah but in case sir if it is extending into the iliac bone the posterior column if it is extending into the iliac bone still it will be a posterior column You said that it is starting from the uh, greater sciatic notch only. Hmm. The white area, which is which you are showing, which is not yeah, the white area about this one, this part one. of iliac bone. No, yeah, this area is. Yeah, if the fracture extending. No, uh, Doctor Vinith, most of the stromal fractures they don't involve this area. So right, that's why, right. That's why the, the column concept has been started. He has included the anterior half of the iliac bone in anterior column, which includes the whole of the stromal, including the roof and the anterior wall. and how about the posterior column is not starting from this area even in analysis of 1000 patients for the lateral it was seen that this part of the bone remains intact and still articulates with the si joint so maybe yeah, maybe in, 
it is uh, it is uh, separated in assays on dis- disruptions no it is not yeah, separated. that is part of pelvis actually it is a part of pelvis okay. it is not separated right. in both in both column fractures if you see the geometry of both column fractures even this part remains intact which is leading to a spur sign right so the posterior column starts from a greater sciatic notch includes the posterior half of dome and the posterior wall of the stabulum this whole surface which is the retrocotylaid surface follows the ischial tuberosity and then breaks here so this pink area and some of the blue area here is the posterior column and this is the anterior column gray area and if both break then it is both column fracture and most of the time this area uh-huh. is not fractured and this the ischemic ramus by is, uh, is part of blue area is... can can be fractured in any of the columns any of them yeah yes most of the time it is more anterior cut in case of entry column fractures and more mm-hmm. posterior cut in case of t shaped or posterior column fractures but right, it can be right. fractured anywhere there is no uh, hard and fast rule as such right so dr smarth has put up sir one more thing he just wanted to know dr smarth mithila posed some question from the pg like also about the anterior wall anterior wall fracture yeah anterior wall is just the middle portion of a anterior column which is involving the dome and the anterior wall only the acetabulum uh, the supporting structures Uh, suppose this bone as well as the bone lower down here it is not broken so it is involving a part of the dome whole of the cartilage as well as the iliopectineal eminence here so this is a partial fracture of a column so wall fracture involves only the articular surface area in but in addition the iliopectineal eminence and the anterior it exits at the anterior inferior leg spine here and ischiopubic notch here so don't think that it is only a cartilage so it is a wedge shaped area of bone which is separated from uh, this particular area of the acetabulum where the uh, general mm. integrity of this uh, iliac bone is maintained you just fix this area or buttress this area so fall fracture is nothing but a partial fracture of a column of the middle segment middle over the supports of the column like in this case the entry half of the leg wing as well as this ischiopubic ramus and the pubic bone they, they are intact so it is just involving the dome the articular anterior wall and iliopectineal eminence as well as ischiopubic ramus here uh, sorry uh, uh, ramus of the pubis superior ramus of the pubis not the ischiopubic ramus so uh, there are two cuts one at the level of uh, uh, superior ramus of pubis other at the level of uh, anterior inferior leg spine just below that and right. a portion of wall gets separated and the similarly for the posterior wall does with the posterior part of the posterior column so here yes this was anterior wall only similarly for right. the posterior wall so this is so this area of bone starting from the yeah. greater sciatic notch then it is not uh, involving the lower down area so the integrity of the column is still maintained in this so although it was including the dome as well as the whole of the wall as well as the retro vestibular mm-hmm. surface some of the surface again i said it could be involving the dome or it could be pure posterior wall fracture or it it could involve the inferior horn so there are different varieties of the wall fractures or it could be just involving a margin of the acetabulum with only a small amount of articular cartilage still that will be wall or it could be a massive wall which might be almost equivalent to a column fracture but still not uh, rupturing the, uh, the obturator foramen so okay. the crucial part is that Uh, the obturator foramen and the whole of the ischium is not ruptured, which is the support of the posterior column. However, there could be a break in the uh, sciatic notch in massive posterior wall or extended posterior wall fractures. But most of the time, it is the margin of the stabulum which is involved, which involves some of the cartilage. That's great. 
Thank you very much. I think since since there is no other question from one chat, question, I think, Dr. Uh, Vineet, can I ask one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, Dr. Sameer, please. Okay, uh, sir. Uh, a common uh, we commonly encounter in emergencies uh, fracture dis posterior fracture dislocations. Yeah. yeah. No. no how to go about it i mean this is an uh, of course an emergency and many a times you have to take the patient to the ot and then how what do you do of the posterior uh, column uh, fracture if it's significant when do you fix it yeah. uh, when do uh, fix it regarding uh, timing of the surgery or the yeah, timing of the surgery and how really i mean how to go about it dislocation yeah. bhi hai aur yeah. posterior yeah. significant fracture bhi hai column ka posterior column yeah. ka so how do we go about it if there is a dislocation of the head uh, most of the time uh, you have to reduce it but many a times in massive posterior wall fractures head could be totally unstable if you re reduce it as soon as the patient returns to the uh, his room or uh, the ward it again gets dislocated correct these these so, are the cases yeah these are very so similar in yeah. massive posterior wall cases the hip could be totally unstable however in posterior column fractures most of the time hip is displaced along with the column fragment and there is no dislocation so mm. it appears as if there is a, a, a dislocation of the head but it is maintaining congruency with the posterior column fragment so that you won't call a dislocation it has yeah. lost its, its uh, congruence with the anterior half of the fragment because head is moving with the posterior column fragment correct so that will not be a dislocation and it has also been seen in uh, various uh, studies and literature that uh, rate of avascular necrosis uh, in uh, dislocations associated with uh, acetabular fractures is less as compared to the pure dislocations okay probably this is uh, yeah. one of the reasons that the head is moving with one of the fragments and in many cases uh, the capsule might uh, gets attached in somewhere uh, some of the fragments like in uh, both column fractures most of the capsule remains intact and that is maintaining the joint congruence so if there is a posterior uh, posterior dislocation of the head that should be gently reduced immediately as soon as the patient arrives in emergency however head could be uh, the hip could be totally unstable so we don't have to make repeated attempts however if uh, the head is impinging against against a particular piece which is uh, might lead to indentation of the head which might be seen in some of the transverse fractures uh -huh. so that is again an emergency although it there might not be any dislocation so still head could be incarcerated between two uh, bony fragments and that will be almost uh, equivalent to avascular necrosis only if you get a severe uh, or a indentation of the femoral head the head will be totally useless so again that is an emergency if head gets incarcerated so you have to see the plain x rays or whatever whether head is being incarcerated in between two fragments of the specially of transverse fractures but so like what dr samir has asked you need to fix the posterior fragment also immediately after so that, that is an emergency if head is getting indentation because of incarceration incarceration or it is totally dislocated posterior dislocation that is an emergency so it has to be reduced but the rest of the fracture should be planned properly and it is an elective surgery uh, dr sharma uh, at yeah. times like it's not very really difficult to reduce the fracture but big problem is be unstable unless there is a some fragment inside the joint and all so, so yeah again head could be unstable so so that is Hmm. Need, and that planet uh, in a day or so when you can uh, do ready for. Dr. Sharad, I think uh, this intra-articular fragments most of the time are not emergencies. So most of the yes, time, you reduce it, put in a traction, yeah. and then plan for a day if, or two. Then if head has been reduced and you still feel there is intra-articular fragment, that is not emergency. It can be removed at the, during dislocation at elective surgery. So most of the time there is no problem. Just what I'm saying, you can plan in a day or two. Then. Ah, yeah, you plan in a day or two. so emergency means uh, not within hours so patient has to plan maybe op um, operated within 3 4 days so most of the stable fractures are uh, operated just like this in the first 5 days 7 days but dislocation of the head or indentation of the head incarceration of the head between two major fragments which is deforming the head or any vascular injury or sciatic nerve is being entrapped these are emergencies in that particular case uh, intervention should be urgent Okay. Right. Any any other question from the EC members and the panelists? So can I request Dr. Sharad to have a give a vote of thanks? One one small comment, uh, uh, Dr. Yes. Sharma. 
uh, very basic things i'm uh, basic big thing i'm uh, just talking about when you when you see the lines in uh, in an uh, ap view maybe and you see the uh, the uh, uh, iliopectineal and iliohistial lines mm -hmm. uh, the iliohistial line uh, what constitutes iliohistial line it is not the border it is not the posterior border actually i said the lines are formed in plain x rays either when uh, x ray beam is crossing a border or it is tangential to a surface right. so so in this particular case the quadrilateral surface of the hip bone which is the inner side of the surface which i show uh, have shown in this particular that's correct uh, quadrilateral surface becomes tangential to the x ray beam in ap view so only a small portion of quadrilateral surface maybe 1 cm wide in the middle of quadrilateral surface not the anterior or posterior that that is becoming tangential so even if uh, that area is intact you'll see the whole uh, iliohistial line to be intact however if fracture is crossing that uh, surface you'll see a break in the iliohistial line so yeah. break in the iliohistial line means the fracture is traversing that column that is a, it is a landmark of posterior column so it will be broken in posterior column fractures posterior uh, anterior column with posterior hemitransverse fractures correct well so, uh, so yeah. it is this particular line is not a uh, sorry sort of line on the hip bone it is a surface right that is a seen as tangential image since the, it is a tangential image where x ray beam is passing through the surface and casting a, a line on the x ray beam x ray plate so this is how the iliohistial line is formed on ap view and this particular line is not seen in any of the views since uh, this quadrilateral surface is not becoming tangential to the x-ray beam it is hitting the surface in oblique angle then it will not be a line or you will still be see, uh, still see a shadow of the bone but it will not be a line right that's fine agree so when we wind up then uh, dr vinay yes sir please the uh, last word from both of you thanks from you, your side very very illuminating talk i mean uh, i had gained a lot i'm sure all of us must have uh, besides our our post grads and other faculty members and uh, other delegates who have joined us thanks dr sharma for such a good talk and uh, uh, thanks to you and dr uh, maninder to arrange and organize and coordinate and uh, uh, moderate it and all our faculty uh, particularly dr mani dr uh, vijay uh, and uh, dr samir and all to dr bageja to join us and all delegates who have joined us uh, thanks a lot and uh, samarth ne samarth ne abhi bhi video on kiya <laughs> samarth as well <laughs> thank you thank, thank you, you very much sir thank, thank you sir. everyone thank you. dr mani doctor thank, thank, thank you very much sir thank you okay. dr thank you dr marinder thanks for can i just say so that samarth was the backup today for the video uh, youtube video so he provided very good backup thank you thankful to samarth yeah. for doing that and hopefully he is the next person now who handles things yeah yeah we, <laughs> so you are passing the baton to samarth <laughs> no not at the moment but yeah if he wants to then i will do it <laughs> <laughs> no no it's a, we can always share the responsibilities <laughs> i think that's how i'll do it thank you bye bye so thank, thank you both thank you dr mani thank you sir thank you, thank you sir. take care